Hey everybody, it's time to work on another statics problem. Here we have problem two from exam two uh, from the spring of 2017. Let's get started. The weightless pipe assembly is supported in the horizontal plane by a smooth collar at A and rests on a smooth surface support at B. Which is basically a fancy way of saying, you know, a roller or whatnot at B. Two vertical forces are applied as shown, the 800 uh, newton force here and the 600 newton force here. Uh, the first thing that they want us to do is draw a free body diagram of the pipe assembly AB. And the second part is determine the support reactions at A and B. Report your answers in Cartesian vector form. And it's saying here that you will not receive credit for part B if you do not draw the FBD. That's a very good rule of thumb for every problem that you do in statics that's like this, every problem that involves equilibrium at all, um, you will not receive credit without the, force body, or the free body diagram. So always make sure you draw that, always make sure you put that in there and label it properly. Uh, you're going to want dimensions and all the forces and all the reaction forces. And that's what, and you're probably going to want to label the points as well. So we'll show you how to do that. So if we want to draw this free body diagram, I'm going to go ahead and just draw it here in this answer box. Just to make it simple. You always want to make sure you put your answers in here. If you put them up here, you'll get credit for it. But if you don't put them in here, you might miss a couple points just because they're not in there. So we'll go ahead and get started. Let me get my ruler out. I think it's better with a straight edge. don't have a ruler, but I have an architect scale, so we'll go ahead and use that. Just any straight edge, honestly. You could use a calculator, you could use... Ah, I don't really know. You could use your ISU ID. I know that's what a lot of people use when I was in it. And that could be pretty handy, because they usually make the proctors go around and check their IDs anyway during the exam. Yeah. But definitely would recommend using a straight edge. You don't have to get too terribly detailed with the free body diagrams, just a few simple lines to show what the pipe are. Like that. I made them a little darker than what I'm going to make the other lines. So let's go through and see what all we have acting on here. Uh, the first things that we can add are our forces here, the 600 pounds. I'll go ahead and draw that down here. Or 600 newtons, my bad. Very different systems we have here and 100 newtons there. I want to make sure we put those in here. Next I'm going to draw, just, just to show where these are, I'm going to go ahead and draw the dimensions. And again, it might have been better to use a straight edge there, but for the sake of what we're doing here, it's not a big deal. And then, hopefully you guys are well versed in free body diagrams that I don't have to explain this too much. But um, if you're not sure how to draw them, hopefully just seeing me draw one here will be pretty helpful for you. So we've got that there. Um, let's go to our support reactions. I'm going to start at B, because B is super simple. It is what they say on a smooth surface support at B. Well, um, that's one thing I recommend for your exam, is going through, in the textbook, it has like a table of all the different types of supports and whatnot, and it tells you what forces act on them. Um, I personally don't have that table memorized. I like to kind of visualize how these things work. So we see that B is a smooth surface support. Well, we got to think about what would happen at B if we were to try to move the beam around it. And so because it's a smooth surface support, we know that there's the force going up on it because this is resting on it. So if we were to try to, let's say we try to move this down, B would resist. It would resist in the Z direction. So that means that we do have a support reaction in the Z direction, which I'm going to draw on our free body diagram down here, going up, and label it BZ. Now, if we, at the, or at the support B, tried to move it in, let's say we tried to move it in the X direction, this way, at all, B would not fight back. It would not fight back. So you could, therefore, move the beam this way. And that means that there is no um, support reaction in the X direction. So we don't have to draw that down here. And kind of a similar deal if we try to move it in the Y direction, this way, and we try to go it over here, it would just move. So no support reaction there either. 
And as far as moments, because it's just a smooth surface support, um, that means that we can't cause moments around it. So, er, it, I'm sorry, it means that there is no reaction moment there. If we tried to twist the beam around it in any direction, it would move. So there's no moment there, it's basically just a roller. So we've got BZ down there. And now we can take a look at our support at A. And so we can kind of use the same logic that we had here. We'll just go through and see which ways we can move it. It says it's a smooth collar. So if you look at this, it means that it can roll along or slide along this little pipe looking thing here. So if we were to try to move A, let's say in the X direction, it would move. There is nothing fighting back. And so that means there is not a support reaction at A in the X direction. Now if we wanted to look at the Y direction and we tried to pull it over in the Y direction or even push it into the Y, um, it would not move. So it's fighting back. Uh, it's, I don't know how to really compare it to anything, but if you could just think about a collar on a pipe, if you were to try to push the collar into the pipe, it's not going to move. It's almost like this architect scale here, and my hand is the collar. If we try to move it this way, let's say this is the X direction, it'll slide just fine. If we try to push it in, or pull it out in the Y direction, my hand's not moving. And if you look at this collar here, it's kind of the same deal in the Z direction. I try to push or pull in the Z direction, it doesn't move. And that means we have support reactions at A in the Z and the Y. And I'm going to go ahead and draw them, assuming them to be positive. So this is going to be A, Y in the positive direction. And then I'm going to have A, Z in the positive direction as well. Another thing you might want to do on your free body diagram is you might want to draw what the axes are so they can kind of see what you're getting at. And it helps you, er, sorry, that's not X. It helps you visualize it as well when you look at your drawing. And we'll have Y, that axis. The axis. Okay, so we've got our force reactions. Um, a, Y, and A, Z, and B, Z over here. Now we need to worry about moment reactions. Because this is in 3D equilibrium, so there's bound to be at least a few. <laughs> um, so if we look at A, this is again where we need to... Whoops, sorry. If we look at A, this is one where we need to, again, kind of visualize what would happen if we tried to move the pipe. This time it's not just moving the pipe or pushing on it, it's trying to put a moment about it. So let's take a look about the x-axis. Let's say our thumb here, I like to use the right hand rule, that's a big thing that I'm a fan of. Let's say our thumb here goes along the x-axis and our fingers are kind of curling in the movement of what the pipe is. If we tried to twist this pipe about this smooth collar, about axis A, it would move. Um, because it's a smooth collar here, we could very easily just move this about it, if that makes sense. It would just slide. Again, it's like looking at this, and we could twist around it in the direction of the collar, no problem. So there is no moment reaction about the X at A. So we don't have to worry about that. But if we take a look about the Y axis, let's say we wanted to twist it about the Y axis, because A is a collar, it would not work. It's like if I took my hand on here, and I try to go this way, my hand is moving just so I could show it to you, but in all reality, it's gonna be fixed. So there is a moment reaction at A about the Y, which we'll draw here. And this is where sometimes it gets a little confusing, but really your labels are what matter the most. I'm just gonna draw kind of this curving thing. And again, we're assuming it's positive about the Y axis. So if you put your thumb in the direction of the Y axis, this is the way your fingers would curve. And so we're gonna have M, A, Y is what I'm going to call that. And then let's look at the Z. The Z is again kind of similar. If we were to try to turn it around the Z um, axis, collar A would fight against us in a similar way that it fought against us in about the Y. So there would be a moment reaction about the Z as well. So let's go ahead and draw it here. M, A, Z like that. Let's see here. As far as I can tell, 
those are all the force reactions we have to worry about. If we take one last quick little check, we see that BY should just have the vertical force that we have there. That kind of makes sense. AY, nothing in the X, something in the Y, something in the Z, and then moments, there'd be no moment about the X, but a moment about the Y, and a moment about the Z. So that should be our free body diagram here. Um, note that I included labels for all the force reactions and the values of the forces here, and I also add dimensions and I put in the axes here to help visualize and I think maybe another good rule of thumb is you're going to want to label the points here so we've got point B and we've got point A that's something that could be helpful it's maybe not the most necessary I don't know if you'd lose points over that but I like to be safe and better safe than sorry you know so that's what our free body diagram is and now we can move on to point B so determine the support reactions at A and B, and report your answers in Cartesian vector form. That basically means for everything that we have here, all the forces and moments we labeled here, we need to solve for them. And just want to make sure we have one, two, three, four, five. Oops, one, two, three, four, five unknowns. And we can have six equations because we can have the sum of the forces and the x, the y, and the z, and the sum of the moments in the x, y, and z. So determine the support reactions at A and B, report your answers in Cartesian form. Now this is where there's not exactly a right or wrong way to start. If you're really, really stumped on this exam and not sure where to go, always with equilibrium equations, just start writing out what things equal, or whatever. Right, start writing out the sum of the forces and the sum of the moments. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started up here. I'm going to start up here, maybe, just because there's less room to work over here. So I'm just going to write our basic equations here. Some of the forces in the x, and hopefully they can see on your drawing here that you mean this is the positive x-axis. So some of the forces in the x. Well, if we look along here, we didn't have an ax, we didn't have a bx, it doesn't look like we have any other forces going in the x at all. So we can write that as 0. Some of the forces y. We'll take a look at here. If we just go along our free body diagram, which looks kind of cluttered, but it's not too bad at all. We have az, and it's going up. Oh, I am so sorry. Hang on. I'm looking at the z. Let's look at the y, which goes this way. So in the y, we have a y. Let's see, we have a y going in the y. We don't have anything along here going in the y. We don't have anything here in the y. B doesn't have any forces in the y. So looking at that, the sum of the forces in the y is equal to a y, making a y just equal to 0. And so that's pretty easy. We know that. We can circle that. That's one of the components that we need to find. And then let's take the sum of the forces in the z. And this is what I was trying to do earlier. If we look at here, we have az. Yeah, it's going in the positive like we drew it. Minus 800, because we have this force going down in the z. Minus 600, because we have this force going down in the, in the z. And then plus bz is equal to zero. Now, so far, this is the most complex one that we have, but we'll be able to deal with it later. We have two unknowns in this one equation, which means we'll need another equation to solve for one of these, and then therefore relate one to the other. I'm going to check out our free body diagram again. It doesn't look like we have any more forces in the z. We have az, the two forces, and bz. So I think we're set there. We'll go ahead and take the sum of the moments. Sum of the moment x. So again, we'll have to take... Um, this is where it gets kind of confusing um, where you want to sum your moments about exactly. But if I were looking at this problem, I would want to sum them... Uh, strategically, when you sum moments, you're going to want to sum them about where a lot of forces are acting, so you can kind of eliminate those forces. Um, 
I guess a better way to say that, so maybe it makes sense, so it's not so visual, is um, let's say if I summed a line here, don't draw this on your free body diagram, but if I drew a line here along this part here and I wanted to uh, sum the moments about it, and this would be technically like the x direction because it's along or parallel to the x axis, um, if I wanted to sum the moments, I would have to include all the moment reactions at A as well as AZ and the other forces here which might not be too bad but if you have a lot of forces in those directions it might make it kind of tricky to see what you're summing your moments about so I'm going to go and sum it about the x-axis here because all of these forces lie or they affect it at the x-axis so I think that'd probably be the easiest way for us to do this um, so I'm going to go ahead, some of the forces I'm going to write MAX. It's going to get confusing because we have M... Well, I guess we don't have MAX here. But some of the moments about the x-axis is going to be equal to... Well, here at A, the forces do not cause a moment. And these moments are about the y and the z-axis, so we don't have to worry about those. So the only other forces that cause a moment about the x-axis here are the 800 and the 600 newtons and BZ. So that makes it kind of easy. Um, so we'll start, I'm going to start with the BZ just so we have it at the start of our equation. So our moment here is going to be BZ and then we want to multiply it by our distance. So our distance here we have 0.8 and 0.8 which makes that 1.6. That's the total distance from this x-axis here. And again I like to use the analogy of pulling on a wrench or whatever. Uh, or pushing on a wrench. Let's imagine that this is kind of a wrench and we have B acting on the outside of it. That's what's causing our moment there. Um, again, if we had B, let's say we had B acting in the Y direction along this, it wouldn't have a moment because it would just be pushing into it. It wouldn't have a moment about the X because it would just be pushing into the X. Kind of like if you push into a wrench, you're not going to twist the bowl. So hopefully that kind of analogy makes sense. Um, right now we just have BZ and if we use right hand rule uh, along the x-axis we can see that it's positive so I'll keep this as positive positive. and now we have these forces and because they're acting on this side and they're kind of pushing down the right hand rule they're both going to be negative so we'll just know that now we'll start with the 800 minus 800 and its distance is going to be 0 0.8 I wrote meters in here, but in your equations you don't really have to use units as long as you put them in at the end. So we've got 800 times 0 0.8 and then minus 600 times, and that is 1.6, and then you always want to say it's equal to 0. Those are the only forces that would be causing a moment about the x here. So not too bad. We're going to go ahead, some of our moments, and again I'm just going to use the y-axis along here. Let's see here what we have. We are going to have M A Y. And that's positive just because we said it was. A Z A Y and A Z are not causing a moment. M Z is also not causing a moment about the Y. Um, so the only other forces causing a moment are B Z and 600 newtons again. So M A Y. It's going to be positive moment from B Z. B Z and that's going to be 0 0.8. And then minus 600 is 0 0.4. That's going to be equal to 0. And then some of the moments about the z. So if this is running a little bit long, remember in these um, problems you only really have about 22 minutes per problem. This is an hour and a half and you have four different problems. I took a long time to kind of explain the free body diagram, but um, I don't think this one would take too terribly long. It might take you, um, well, it might take you the full 20 minutes or whatnot. But just be cautious of your time. I'm not being very cautious of my time, but I have time to spare right now. <laughs> you won't have as much time to spare in the exam, so be cautious of that. We're going to have M, A, Z. We've got the Z axis here. And any other forces about the Z axis uh, does not look like it. Because these are acting parallel to the Z axis. Parallel to the Z axis means no moment caused. Um, so, 
as far as I can tell, it's just going to be maz is equal to 0. That's another component that we need. So we're kind of set there a little bit. And as far as the rest, it's not too hard to solve for from here. So we have maz is equal to 0. Now we just need to find what the other forces are. So if you look at our equations, um, we have two unknowns in this one and two unknowns in this one. But here at max, we just have the single unknown, and that's bz. So you don't have to, but I'm going to draw an arrow to kind of show the work that I'm doing here. And so I'm going to set this as bz 1.6 is going to be equal to 800 times 0 0.8 plus 600 times 1.6. And that's because it's just algebra. I'm adding these to both sides, moving them from this side to the other side, makes them that way. And doing the math, it's going to be bz is equal to, and my apologies if you hear music in the background, I'm recording this in my den, and there's some music playing out in the hall, so hopefully it's not too distracting, and hopefully maybe you can't even hear it. Um, I'm going to show you my calculator here. We've got 800 times 0.8 plus 600 times 1.6. Uh, that gives us 1,600 on this side. And then I like to just be cautious and do my math here, even though I could probably do it in my head. That gives us a thousand for BZ. So BZ equals one thousand. Looks like Newton's here, so that's another component that we need. And we can use that to solve for other things. So if we were to take this equation here, so the force is Z, it's going to be AZ minus our 800, minus our 600, and now BZ is going to be 1,000. It's going to be positive 1,000. And what this positive 1,000 means, by the way, is it means that BZ is indeed acting up like we thought it would. So that's kind of good news. In your free body diagrams, as long as you have the arrows drawing which direction, um, you all you have to worry about is whether it's positive or negative. They should be able to gather what you mean by that. Um, in 3D equilibrium at least. In 2D equilibrium, I like to be a little more certain and draw arrows, but we don't have to worry about that right now. So we have AZ is going to be equal to, and I'm just going to add everything to the other side, it's going to be equal to the 800 plus the 600, and it would be minus BZ, I'm just going to go ahead and write out as negative 1000. And doing that, it looks like we should have 14,000 minus 1,000. So you've got 400. And that's again going to be Newtons. And it's again positive, so that's kind of cool. We've got that solved for. And then lastly, we'll go down here. We've got 4 out of the 5 unknown solved for. And we'll take this equation here. And again, BZ is going to be equal to 1,000. So I'm just going to write this out as, let's see, MAY is equal to... Um, I like to kind of start with the negatives first and add those. So it's going to be equal to 600 times 0 0.4. This is just algebra at this point, so hopefully you guys are following along. It would be negative 1, 2, 3, 0 0.8. MAY plus 600 times 0 0.4 minus 1,000.8. And this one I cannot do in my head, so I'm going to go ahead and get the calculator back out. Let's see what we got. Uh, 600 times 0.4 whoop, minus 1 times 0.8 and that gives us MAY is equal to negative, negative 560 negative 560 and that's going to be uh, Newton meters and those are the five unknowns that we needed to solve for if you look down here, um, it's not asking for each of the components by themselves. What it's asking for is the reactions at each point in their components. Um, that's just a different way of asking. It's not too bad, though, um, how we're going to do this. It's basically taking everything that we found and putting it into vector form. So if we wanted to start the force reaction at A, we're going to look at all the components that we found at A. So... Um, the first thing that we know is the force at A, there was no AZ. So because there was no, or, or I'm sorry, there was no AX, force in the a X direction. So that means we can have zero I, just because the force there was zero. Or there just was not, did not exist. 
So we'll just put zero i. Um, as far as the y direction, uh, we solve for ay is equal to zero, so we can say zero j. And then in the k direction, or the z, um, it looks like we had a positive 400. So we're going to write that as plus 400 k, and then always want to put units on the end there. As far as the moments, about a. I'm just checking over something real quick. Okay, so the moment's about A. If we look here, again, we did not have a moment about the X. So that's going to be 0i. And the Y was negative 560. So we're going to say minus 560J. And then in the Z direction of the K, we had the moment was equal to 0. So that would be plus 0, K. And now we can go to our forces in the B. But like we know, B only had one direction that was in the Z. So down here, just knowing that, it's going to be 0, I plus 0, J plus um, the 1,000 K Newtons. And my apologies, I forgot new. Uh, Forgot the units up here, but it's going to be in newton meters, just as we determined down here. And now the moment's at B. That's really simple. It's just zero. There was no moment reaction. I believe um, this. That's kind of what I was asking. Is it's kind of want you to know um, what each of the supports, their moments and forces are. But if we know these well enough, we would know that there would not be any moments on that because it's just simply resting on a support on the table. So it can move around as much as it wants with moments. And all it's doing is pushing up. So if we look through these, um, I think all these values seem to make sense with everything that's um, occurring in this, in this diagram that we have up here in our force diagram, or free body diagram, I think it all makes sense. So um, that's how you solve problem two of exam two from spring 2017. I didn't think it was too difficult of a problem. 3D equilibrium hopefully won't be too challenging on the test. Um, there might be some more complex ones than this one. This one wasn't too terrible. And it didn't take, it took a long time, but um, if I didn't stop to explain it, it probably would have gone a little quicker. So I wouldn't be, I would definitely prepare these. You're definitely going to have one of these um, and know how to sum forces, some moments. Um, free body diagram is always key to these types of qu uh, problems, questions. So with that, I hope you guys appreciated this. I hope this made sense, and I hope everything's correct for y'all. Um, I have nothing else to say, so thanks for watching, and I hope you watch the others, and I hope you have good luck studying and good luck on this exam. Thanks.